Now we've already drawn a probability distribution table, histogram and polygon using theoretical data, which is where we just estimate what might happen based on logic. And the example we used was tossing a coin four times, or four coins at once, and looking at how many heads we might get. And we came up with some probabilities based on logic. Here we're doing the exact same thing, except we're just doing an actual experiment. So perhaps we're flipping the same, we're flipping four coins still and we're looking for the number of heads, but if it was a weighted coin, we wouldn't be able to use logic to figure out the probabilities. So we'd be stuck with having to run an experiment and actually look at what happened. So in this experiment, we're getting each person who takes part to flip four coins and have a look at how many heads they get. And we're carrying out the experiment 100 times. So then if we just list the frequency of how many times each thing happened, here we've got 11 times so that somebody flipped a coin and must have got all tails, no heads at all. So these will then add up to 100 as a sum. And the, the frequency is, is really only helpful if we convert that to relative frequency because we want to say, okay, cool, you've got that 11 times, but 11 out of how many? Because if you got 11 out of 11 times, you'd say that this is very common. Whereas if you know it's 11 out of 100 times, that now gives you an estimate and that's what relative frequency is. It's an estimate based on experimental probability that helps you estimate what's going to happen in the future. So these relative frequencies then can easily be graphed and we might see a slightly different thing actually happening here if it's a weighted coin than what we expected when we were flipping fair coins. And we can join the tops of the columns up to make our relative frequency polygon like this. Now, relative frequency is written frequency with a little r there for relative. So if you think of it as frequency relative, it will remind you that the symbol has the r actually after the f, which is a little confusing. Frequency, we just put an f. Now, just as we can add together things when we're looking at um, sorry, theoretical probabilities, we can do the same with experimental probabilities. So we can have our cumulative relative frequency where we just add up each column. And so as we go to graph these, we're going to end up with, sorry, I haven't actually graphed this one yet, we're going to end up with our columns getting bigger and bigger, we're up to 30 one hundredths there, 60 eight hundredths here, and as you make each column, you've got to say, what's the chance that someone threw three heads or less, always saying that or less reminds you what this one is all about, and of course the last column should be all the way up to one, because it's certain that everybody got four heads or less. When we join together our dots to make our polygon for a cumulative version, we always go to the top right hand corner of each box, and that will give us a cumulative relative frequency polygon.